What's up guys, today we'll be going over the new season artifact, the Gate Lord's Eye, and break down all the mods, all 25 of them, and what they do. And I want to make this video for all the players that haven't necessarily explored their entire artifact yet, or are confused about what some of them do. Also, for players that haven't played Shadow Keep yet, you can kind of see what they're missing out on and see if they want to come back to play in the season. Also, just break down all the mods for future videos that we don't have to cover them in detail every single time. So first, starting with the first column, which all are going to be general armor mods that do something with Glimmer. Or something like that so first starting with the first one dark glimmer defeating hive combatants with finishers grants extra glimmer mod does not stack and like i said these are all general armor mods so on the very left slot of every single armor piece you can put this mod in and it does not stack so only one will do and looking what it does when i finish a hive enemy i get 27 glimmer and when you shoot an enemy normally you get two glimmer then there's also a chance of them creating a glimmer pile which is 28 so there's a chance that you can actually get more by not doing the finisher but the finisher is guaranteed 27 every time. The next one will be defeating Vex Minotaur's Green's weapon parts. Mod does not stack once again. So if we go kill a Minotaur, as you see, we will get one gunsmith material. And there appears to be no cooldown on these mods. So as fast as you can kill Minotaurs is how fast you can get the parts. Next up will be defeating Hive Combatants gives extra glimmer. Before we only got two per kill, now we get 17. So that's 15 more per kill, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that will add up very quickly if you're killing Hive over and over again. Going from 2 to 17 is 8.5x the glimmer, so obviously if you're killing Hive over and over again, you're going to get your entire glimmer 8.5 times faster. Next one up will be the exact same mod, but for Vex now. So once again, we get 17 per kill on Vex compared to 2 before without the mod, and once again, this mod does not stack. So if you're killing Vex over and over again, for example in the raid or Vex incursion or whatever, something like that, and you really need glimmer, slap this on, and you will definitely notice getting a lot more glimmer and capping out way, way quicker. Last mod in the left column will be defeating Vex Hobgoblins Grand's Destination Materials. So if you can find a lot of hobgoblins on a single planet that you can farm very quickly and you need that destination planet material, for example, I'm on Nessus right now, every single time you get a kill, you get one of that planetary material. And there doesn't appear to be a cap or cooldown on this mod, so as long as you can kill hobgoblins as fast as possible, you keep getting the material. So if you can find a good spot on a planet, that might be a really good way to farm that material. Starting on the second column with all the weapon mods, which are different round types and things like that, Starting with the first one, Anti-Barrier Rounds. This one will be for auto rifles and submachine guns. Shield piercing rounds designed to bypass combatants' defenses, strong against barrier champions. And like I mentioned, this is for ARs and SMGs, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on Breakneck first, and we're going to kind of see what it does. So one thing that it does is it goes right through enemy shields. As you see, as I destroy this Minotaur's Void Shield, it also starts doing damage to their regular health bar at the same time. Another thing that does that is really cool is it goes right through Hobgoblin's little immune phase. Also, it's very good against barrier champions once they put up their little defenses. It will prevent them from regening during that and also will break that little bubble. Next mod up will be anti-barrier hand cannon. So the exact same name, but now for hand cannons. So now we can slap this one on any hand cannon that we want. I put it on my spare rations and it will do a lot of the similar things that we just showed and a few other things that you can do with these anti-barrier rounds is go straight through failing shields also i've heard you can go straight through hydro shields so pretty much anything in the game with a shield it can go right through next up will be overload rounds this one is for ars and smgs uninterrupted fire grants bullets that cause disruption delaying ability energy regeneration and lowering combatant damage output strong against overload champions so this one works on ARs and SMGs, this time I'm going to go ahead and put it on my Recluse. And whenever you fire with Recluse now, it will create disruption rounds. As you see when you shoot non-stop, you get an overload shot, and it's only one shot at a time, and it's roughly halfway through the entire magazine. So looking at what it does on Greg, first his damage is really strong, it obviously beams right through you, but once you disrupt them, his damage output will be a lot lower as you see right here as he hits me it's still doing a lot of damage but it's definitely a lot less than it was before another thing that these disruption rounds do is reduce the regen speed of enemies abilities for example on a minotaur their blink then also their three round burst of their attack is now slower as you see he doesn't teleport or is nearly as aggressive and his fire takes longer to cool down so it definitely works pretty well on things like that. And finally, it also works for overload champions, which are usually in nightfalls and things like that, which you have to have one of these type of weapons to be able to stun them. And you can only damage them during that stun. So it's very good for that. 
Next up will be Overload Arrowheads, which is gonna be the exact same name we just talked about now for bows when you fully draw them. So if we go ahead and slap that on the Hush, which was the Gamut Pinnacle weapon from last season, every time you fully draw the bow back, you get the Overload shot. So it's very easy to tell and know when you're going to do it compared to the SMGs and ARs. And as you see, once again, it makes them a lot less aggressive. Now testing how long Disrupt actually lasts shooting at this Ogre. It's going to last roughly 5 seconds, which is actually pretty long for just a base Disrupt. Next up will be Unstoppable Hand Cannon. Aiming down sights loads a powerful explosive payload that staggers unshielded enemies strong against unstoppable champions. So this one's gonna be all about stun locking enemies, so we can put it on any hand cannon we want. Once you ADS, it takes almost one second to get that round loaded into the magazine, as you see right here. And when you shoot an enemy, it staggers them like it says, and that's pretty much all it does. Now looking at an enemy that actually shoots back, it appears that there is a cooldown on how quick they can stagger. It's roughly every other shot, or if you just wait long enough between shots, it should stagger them every time. And you don't even have to aim straight at them, as long as the explosion is hitting them, it should stun them, which could be good for a lot of enemies that you couldn't stun before. And we're going to quickly look at the middle column, which are all the enhanced loaders. For the purpose of this video, I'm just going to look at the hand cannon and SMG. You also have bow, fusion rifle, and auto rifle. And pretty much what these are, are just the enhanced perks that we had before on Armor 1.0. And you can put them on any gauntlets in the game. They only cost one energy, which is really good. So for this test, I'm going to use SMG and hand cannon. That way I don't have to waste my glimmer like I already am, resetting my artifact a million times. And like I mentioned, they're pretty much just the enhanced reloads from before. So it's going to take these weapons pretty much to the reload cap for them, which is really good and really nice. And the fact that we have SMG this season and also hand cannon, those are two pretty meta weapons in PvE. So that's really nice for this artifact. And given the fact that they only cost one energy, they're very easy to use compared to some of the other reload perks that the same normal hand cannon reload is three, but the enhanced one is only one. So it's very easy to use and you should definitely be using them. Moving on to the fourth column, which are going to be all the chest armor mods. Looking at the first one, grants grenade energy on final blows with shield piercing weapons or when a member of your fire team shuts down a barrier champion's ability. So this will pair really well with the Recluse with anti-barrier rounds on it. Then like I mentioned, all these are going to be chest mods. So on your chest piece, this one will cost 3 energy. And go ahead and slap that one on and see how this pairs really well with Recluse with anti-barrier rounds. Go ahead and throw my grenade and get kills. And every single kill with this Recluse, because I have those rounds on it, will give me a slight portion of my grenade back. It's going to take quite a while to get it fully back, but it's definitely a lot quicker than not having a mod like this on. It's going to be roughly like 10 to 15 kills, and that is actually pretty quick to get your grenade back. And when you pair it with something like Recluse that you're going to be using a lot anyways for Ackler, I mean, that's pretty much free grenade energy. The next mod will be the exact same name, but now for melee energy instead. So once again, pairing it with Recluse with anti-barrier rounds. And once again, use my melee first and see how much energy I get. This time I'm going to get a lot more energy per kill pretty much double maybe even triple that of the grenade one that's because your grenade is generally a lot stronger than your melee but if you're playing something like titan with melting point with the one two punch build that's definitely very usable next mod up will be void grenades cause disruption so everything we mentioned before about disruption but now it procs when you use a void grenade now testing how long it works compared to the regular disrupt on weapons it should be a little bit longer because the grenade will keep procking it until the grenade disappears and that real timer only starts once the grenade stops ticking so it now lasts 8.5 seconds which is a lot longer than the normal one next mod will be the one that improves the effects of disruption lowering combatants damage output even further so first, testing if it lasts longer or not with this on, procking it on this ogre, see how long it lasts. And I found that it did last a little bit longer, I don't know if that's just placebo or due to testing, but it seemed to last one second longer. But the real thing that does is further decreases their damage and their aggressiveness. As you see, he barely even attacks me because his attack is on such a long cooldown that he can't even do it. And when he does use his attack while being enhanced, disrupted, or whatever you want to call it, it does a lot less damage than it does normally, so if you're using a Disrupt build, that's definitely the perk you want to be using while doing it. The final mod of this column will be Unstoppable Melee. Arc Melee abilities stagger unshielded enemies, strong against unstoppable champions. So this will be very similar to the bottom hand cannon mod, and once again, this is going to be chest piece lane, so go ahead and slap it on a chest piece and see what it does. Making sure to use an Arc Melee and doing it on Greg, and as you see, it does stagger him, but with a one-time use melee ability, it's not that great. So maybe on something like Hunter, where it doesn't take your melee charge until you actually get the kill, it could actually be pretty useful. 
as you see right here, it staggers them every single time I punch them. So this could be really useful on the Hunter 1-2 punch build if you're not staggering the enemy already. Now looking at the final right column of mods, these are all them be class item mods. The first one is going to be heavy finisher. Finishers generate heavy ammo, requires one half of your super energy. So once again, these are all them be your class item mods. And this one is 7 energy, so I have to make a lot of room for it as you see right here. I have to first get rid of my recovery mod to make room for it. Now that I have that on, see what it does. First with no ammo at all, see what it does when I get a finisher kill. It generates one box guaranteed every time, that is 4 ammo for my GL. And just making sure that wasn't like a bug that one got 4, I went ahead and went into the raid and did it again. And once again, I get 4 ammo per lane, but I have to use half of my super to be able to do this, so I don't think that's really worth it. Maybe if it was a box for your entire fire team, maybe, but one box of 4 for your half your super, count me out. Up next will be probably the best mod in this entire artifact, Oppressive Darkness. Causing damage with a Void Grenade adds a weakened effect to enemies. So go ahead and throw a nade at them, and the second it hits them it starts a debuff, which is going to last for roughly give or take 5 to 6 seconds, it's hard to tell. And that is a 30% debuff that does not stack with the other debuffs in the game. Now if we use it with a grenade that lasts longer such as a Vortex, it should make the debuff last longer as you see right here. It now lasts roughly 6 to 7 seconds which is pretty good, and if you go on bottom tree Night Stalker with Lockdown, which makes your grenades effects last twice as long, with Vortex again, you can make this last very, very long, which is really good for a single debuff on Hunter. So if you don't have your tether up or something like that, this is definitely a really good way to debuff an enemy for your entire team. And with this, it now lasts almost 14 to 15 seconds, which is really good. Now moving on to the next mod, which will be Arc Battery. Grants overshield and reduce cooldown during activation for all arc class abilities. And the keyword there is during activation. So looking at what that does, if I put down my rally barricade, during the activation I have an overshield, then it does increase cooldown. I'm not quite sure what the cooldown means. I think it is for the class ability itself, but I'm not quite sure what that means. Up next will be a really good mod on this artifact, Thunder Coil. Grants bonus damage for all arc melee abilities and refunds super energy on finisher final blows. So looking at what this does first without the mod on, go ahead and punch this guy with my arc melee. It's 3872. Now I'll go ahead and put Thunder Coil back on. See how much it hits now. It should hit 5963, which is a 54% buff, which means it pairs really well with both the one-two punch builds for both Titan and Hunter. First on Titan with Peregrine Greaves and one-two punch. It can easily one shot this ogre and the same thing will happen with the one two bunch build on hunter that's just an extra 54 percent free damage and the second part about this mod is you get super energy back on finisher final blows and it's just a tiny chunk it's not very much at all the main part of this is that 54 percent more damage the final mod will be from the depths grants bonus void super damage if cast while critically wounded lasts until the end of the super activation so we go ahead and look at what this does first on sentinel throwing a shield it hits 9116 now if we go ahead and put the mod on and make sure we are weak before we pop our super. I'm going to do that by shooting a Geo at my feet. See now it hits 11,850 which is going to be exactly a 30% buff in your super damage which is very very good. And I also tested if it worked with weapons of light first without making myself weak. I hit 2342. Now popping weapons of light while weak does that increase my damage? No it does not. It stays the exact same so that's pretty good. I could see that actually working, but good thing they tested that. And doing the same test with Tether, first without being wounded, 2730. Now shooting myself and Tether in the enemy then, see if it works with Tether. And once again, same damage, so that's once again really good testing on their end. But where it does work really well is on Night Stalker with Mobius Quiver. Once the enemy is tethered, the follow-up tether shots do massive damage. And I'm talking massive damage, so if I weaken myself, then tether the enemy, and then tether again, those follow-up tethers do a lot, lot more damage. It's like multiple Izanagi shots all at once type damage. So after explaining all the mods, there are definitely a lot of build options. As you see making this video, I'm pretty much out of glimmer. My reset artifact is up to 50,000 on my Warlock. And right now I'm just gonna kind of go through what I would kind of build my artifact around for my playstyle on Warlock. And you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing. Now you might not want to copy exactly what I'm doing because depending on what weapons you're using or what playstyle you're trying to go for or what build you're trying to go for, all these different variables, you might use different things. But this is kind of like my general go-to for my Warlock at least and pretty much covers everything I want to do. So now that we're getting to some of the harder ones to pick, I use this one to get my grenade back while using Recluse with Shield Piercing Rounds. 
you can also use hand cannons and things like that with the same rounds but recluse is definitely part of the pv meta so you can be getting your grenade back a lot with that mod i also unlocked the one that improves disruption because of the other ones there none of them really makes too much sense for my build and right now i don't really necessarily need any of the other ones available i'm just trying to get to the right one but i need to slot another vein to be able to get to the right column so i went ahead and did the melee energy also that way if i need it when i'm using recluse then i can get it then on the right slot, I'm going to go ahead and use the bottom one for Nova Bomb. If you're weak while popping Nova Bomb, that's 54% more damage, which is really good for single target damage. Then I go ahead and slap on Oppressive Darkness if I'm playing a Void Walker subclass with that debuff for the grenade. So this entire build is about good damage on Nova Bomb, also really good debuffs for Nova Bomb, then also really quick grenades on Nova Bomb with Recluse with Show Person Rounds and things like that. So that's what this kind of build goes for, and I think it's probably one of the best Warlock ones. But if you're playing Hunter, or titan you might go for one of the arc melee ones and things like that so it just depends on what you're trying to do and i hope you guys learned a lot about these mods in this video that way i can start breaking down different combos in future videos and not have to break down every single mod every single time anyways thanks for watching catch you guys next time